warm welcome to Interface here on SABC2. My name is Tembi Samachele. Well, gender equality is a challenge in most sectors in society, as you know, and the film and TV industry is no different. With women making up more than half of the population in South Africa, what impact does their exclusion in most of the storytelling through film and TV have? And what strides are women making in the South African film and TV industry? These are just some of the questions that we are going to be looking at tonight as we chat to our guests and looking at the strides that women have made so far when it comes to film and TV. But first, let's take a quick look at this insert produced by Rosalia Whitehead. South African women such as Tolile Shabalala, Khumatso Matsonyane and Connie Ferguson are some of the many women who have not only demonstrated their acting talent on screen, they've also shown they can hold their own behind the scenes as directors, writers and producers. At 115 years old, South Africa's film industry is the oldest on the continent. Since the advent of democracy, the participation of black people and women has not been substantial. This industry plays an important role as it provides a forum for debate, documents historical events and communicates ideas. It also generates millions of jobs throughout the world. One of the key issues raised by the National Planning Commission's 2011 report is that gender inequality continues to be a challenge despite the integration of women in key decision-making roles. Women comprise 50% of the world's population, making their contribution to the economy and society just as important. The World Economic Forum has found that a nation's competitiveness depends, among other things, on whether and how it educates and utilizes its female talent. With the dawn of democracy and to ensure gender equality, the South African Broadcasting Corporation began to introduce more women in all positions. Like the film industry, Women in the television industry have also had to grapple with gender transformation. It was so difficult. I am telling you, it was the whole new world, but you had to put your mind there. 19 years ago, Lucia Mjali began her career in the television industry at the SABC and had to contend with racism, but there was always the underlying challenge of sexism. After pushing through the ranks, she is now technical director who still experiences ingrained sexism. To be um, taken seriously in this industry, especially uh, comparing ourselves, women, to our male and counterparts, because at some point there's still that uh, um, element of uh, belittling, you know, especially women in this industry, because especially when you are a director, you are the main person of the show who's going to uh, put the whole show on air and everything, you'll still find there are some men who's still going to criticize you because you are a female director. Mjali's sentiment is also shared by camera operator Funega Mzilikazu Odugo. But there have been some positive changes as more women enter the industry. The cameras have become lighter and easier to use. For women so it gave us advantage for women to come in the industry because now it's no longer bulky and heavy overseeing news studio cruise manager stanley maynard says most studio equipment are digital to accommodate both genders maynard says while some positions were preserved for men previously women can now take up any position he's noted that this industry continues to be more popular amongst men uh, ratio around about more or less 40 percent to 60 percent towards men, but there's always space for improvement. Globally, the film and television industry continues to be criticized for largely being male-dominated, but the women in the industry are passionate about their work. I was a woman with a disability, thanks to the democracy that we are in right now, uh, I was able to come in. So most of the machines here, you need to operate them with both hands. Mm -hmm. So with me, that's another challenge that I had to, you know, make sure that people don't feel sympathetic towards me. You know, I have to push myself and prove to everybody that it's not about the disability that I have, but it's what's in here mm -hmm. and what's in here. While the South African film and television industry has a myriad of challenges, the women in Hollywood also face the same challenges. 
Only 26% of women get major roles behind the camera in Hollywood films, while only 23% of feature films are directed by women. Throughout the movie, I, you'll see it, I am running. Rosalia Whitehead, Interface, to Johannesburg. He, he, he sees this picture. And those are just some of the people that work tirelessly behind the scenes to keep shows like Interface here on SABC coming to you every single week. So we salute them and we particularly this Women's Month salute the women that are doing so well to keep our show on air. So let's introduce our guest to you. Zamam Kosi is the CEO of the National Film and Video Foundation. And Ntabi Singh Dao is an actress and also now a director on SABC's uh, popular soapy Isidingo. Thank you very much to both of you for coming through and welcome. Thank you for Thank having you. us. So we were looking at the stats uh, mm -hmm. in that clip, but if you were to quantify the contribution of uh, the film and video industry mm -hmm. uh, and TV industry to the GDP, what would you quantify that? Um, we did, uh, as, as uh, the National Film and Video Foundation a couple of years ago, uh, we commissioned Deloitte to conduct an economic baseline study for us. And uh, that baseline study showed that then, which was about two years ago, uh, the, film in, the film industry was contributing 3.5 billion. And that is just the film is industry. That the blockbusters? Yeah, not or only the, the bloggers, even the small, the small films. But that figure was even excluding television. And television goes into double digits in terms of the billions that it contributes to the South African economy. Mm. Mm. And if you're looking at the stats that uh, Rosalia put in that mm -hmm. piece, in the US, they're talking about 26% of major films, uh, only women uh, making up 26% of the directors of major films. Mm -hmm. What, what mm. does it look like in South Africa? Though? Well, in South Africa, it looks even way less than that, particularly if you look at um, the productions that end up on cinema release. I mean, we did also a study as NFEF and we found that um, in, in any year you find that 25 full South African films are released. Uh, on cinema. That's mm. 25 out of, you will say, over almost 300 uh, films that are released on cinema on an annual basis. And of those 25, it's not only even the issue of women. Of those 25, I can bet that not even a single one in the last year has been directed by a woman. Because you'll find that less than 5% are even directed by previously disadvantaged individuals. So we have a long way, a long but way why to is go. That? Well, there, there's a myriad of factors. Yeah. Um, I think there really is still a situation where the industry is very male-dominated. And uh, being male-dominated not only by the number of males mm -hmm. that are still in key roles, which is still a reality, but over and above that, the male domination in terms of the mentality that is still operating, the rules of engagement are still very much favoring, you know, the, the business model of, you know, of a male type of thinking, which, for, which I find that in most instances it disadvantages women from coming in to the industry. That is the first thing, the male domination in terms of the numbers and mm. the perception um, in the industry. So you've got women like you and Tabi Singh, yeah. women who have transcended from being in front of the screen mm. Uh, yeah. to now working behind the scenes. Yeah. What kind of obstacles are you finding behind the scenes? You find that uh, you have to work triple as hard. Mm -hmm. You have to work longer hours. You have to do extra. You, you, the male counterparts, they just have to br bring the bare minimum. You must bring extra all mm -hmm. the time. And, mm -hmm. and it's uh, very unfortunate because the industry does need a female perspective. Mm -hmm. It's almost an, an unconscious mm -hmm. way of of silencing the woman's perspective by keeping ma males in those roles and whatnot. Like for instance, I'll make an example. Um, when you're watching a film, mm. for instance, as an actress as well, when you have a female lead, she has to have a male counterpart almost mm. to lift her up. So mm. if she's a superhero, she can't be too much of a superhero because then she alienates her audiences. So she has to have a male counterpart who's, who kind of like revs her and, he, and she has to have an emotional journey. And she can never just be strong. Mm. We can never just have strong females mm. who are just mm. doing the work. So mm. I want to know mm. what you as the women in the industry are doing about that. But we have to take a short break. We're yeah. back after this. Okay.
Looking for social issues? It is not our intention to give condoms to 10-year-old children. Looking for religious issues? The point is uh, not for the church to try and prove whether this is the fact. So we want accountability. Is there a system of governance in your churches? Political issues. Barack Obama said Africa should stop looking to the outside for salvation and focus on someone else being at fault for the problems of the continent. Economic issues. The young mothers, uh, single mothers, that's buying property now. Or just looking to air your views. Yeah, some of your views on social media. Look no further, as Newsroom has all the informative information you need. Weekdays at 9 a.m. only on the SABC News Channel. Welcome to Network, a technology news program that also discusses what's trending in social media in and around Africa. MTN has launched its new movie and television streaming service, Front Row. If it's trending, we will find it. That's Network with me, Spumela Lezondi, every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. only on the SABC News Channel. Stand by. <laughs> All systems ready. Three, two, one. You're watching Interface and we are reflecting on the strides made by women in the film and TV industry and we are in conversation with Zamam Korsi who is the CEO of the National Film and Video Foundation and also on Tabiseng Dao who is an actress and also a director on Isidingo. So before the break we're talking mm -hmm. about some mm -hmm. of the challenges that you face on mm -hmm. the job on the yeah. ground. What are you as women in the industry doing about it? Well I suppose we just have to make our mark you have to push through whatever challenges that you have mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. almost like you have to wear some kind of armor you have to do more because we are at the forefront of su supposed change mm. so um it's on us to do more to to um tell better stories to tell it from a woman's point of view to to actually almost kind of break barriers i feel like i'm on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm at a war sometimes mm. because mm. That's essentially what needs to happen in order for people to change and change their perspective on women's uh, uh, points of view in telling stories and points of view in t being the catalyst of telling a mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. have to do more. We, that's all we can do. I, yeah. I can't walk around just kind of milling about and say, oh, no, no, but 80% mm -hmm. of the work is there. No, I have to do 120%. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. collectively, supposedly, mm -hmm. you've got to mm -hmm. come together yeah. and share your challenges. I know uh, that Kolile uh, mm -hmm. Chabalala was quoted as saying that women are still telling stories of men. Of course. And you're not telling your own stories. But what are you doing as a group of women in the industry? How are you uh, approaching mm -hmm. entities mm -hmm. like the NFVF and, and mm -hmm. others and government and petitioning them. And it's unfortunate, actually, come to think of it, we haven't really done it. I remember I was sitting mm -hmm. with one of Rhythm City's um, directors, a female director, Brenda, and we were actually mm -hmm. trying to count how many mm -hmm. black female directors there are in the industry. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get to 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Just on television, we couldn't get to 10 who do multicam directing. And then just sitting there, you already feel disempowered. You feel like, what? can we do mm. what what is it as in Thai we can I do and mm. it feels as though we don't have the options mm. or maybe we just mm. don't have the information or we're not looking hard enough but mm. it doesn't mm. feel like it's at our disposal the mm. truth is it just feels as though we're being given a chance and we are maximizing on that chance but Zama, mm. isn't that an indictment then on your organization for mm. not making sure that these women are collaborating and coming together mm. to find the solution 
Uh, well, maybe first, it is not an indictment on us. Mm -hmm. um, I think there certainly is a level of responsibilities that all of us have to take on wherever mm -hmm. we are. I think the responsibility of uh, gender parity really lies mm -hmm. on all of us, mm -hmm. whether males or females, um, you know, whatever level we are, whether you are in an entity or you are a woman director yourself, mm -hmm. I think we have a response to look at what role can I play to make sure that I improve the situation, not just for myself, mm -hmm. but for other women and the women that will come next to me, um, mm -hmm. um, after me. And as, as NFVF, we recognized this and we took on a responsibility. This was uh, almost four years ago, mm -hmm. where we, we came up with a program to, to empower especially female filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And what we said is that we are going to put aside funding. This funding is not going to be accessible by anyone else, but female Directors are and you those seeing a take an uptake of that funding mm. by female directors? Absolutely, absolutely, oh, wow. we have. Mm. We have this is we're going to go into our third year now, and each year we've produced 10 short films that are made by female directors. And what we've insisted on as well is that they use female heads of departments in terms of those. In that way, we're creating a mm. female pipeline so that we do not have a situation once again when those people come out into mm. the industry and people say no, but there are no. You know, there's no, there are no female directors, mm. there are no female script editors. No mm. So we're saying we are building that pipeline. You may not be seeing it as yet in terms of it flooding the market. Yeah. You still have those few, but what we are doing is we're building up. And mm. I think it has shown great, great results. I take your mm. point that everybody has got to play their part. Yeah. But as yeah. an organization, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you should be championing the cause to try and rally the women and support them, mm. particularly if they're talking about less than 10 mm -hmm. female directors. You should be mm doing something uh, and having a strategy in place to try mm -hmm. and make sure that they get the support they need. Mm -hmm. What strategy do you have for and, that? And, and that is exactly that, that, you know, we are beyond talk shop. I think we're beyond saying, let's have another Indaba that yeah. talks mm -hmm. about where women are. We moved mm -hmm. beyond that. Instead, we put money, we put a program, we put out a call and said, women, come forward, present yourselves, here's the money, make films, and mm -hmm. that's what they did. And we are hoping that that's going to grow from strength to strength. Mm. I and now. I mean, we've seen that it, it, it is. <laughs> now you know, yeah, and perhaps know. you can yes. approach mm. them. Mm. And, and, and those films group. have mm. won, I mean, have won awards. Recently at the Durban International Film Festival that has just taken place mm. in Durban, one of those short films, I mean, by a young filmmaker, Balisa Shongwe, mm. she won the best, you know, short, short, oh, wow. you know, short mm. film, best South African short film at, mm. at DIF. And many of them that are coming up that are making their marks, you know, locally and internationally. Oh, fantastic. Now we know. Now I'll, I'll speak to Brenda when I get to work today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that's always an issue is content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at what is uh, on screen, particularly mm. on the big screens, yes. we don't yes. see ourselves reflected. Mm. No. What no. is no. the solution for that? <sighs> Again, it has to be told from a woman's point of view. Um, the way men are portrayed in stories has mm. to also change. Mm. It's, ve it's a very patriarchal story. Mm. You've got men who are saviors. They are game changers. Mm. And it's the way the world has, mm. like, it's the way the world sees men. Mm. And women are always mm. portrayed in the way the world sees women. Mm. We are damsels mm. in distress. We need to be saved. We need to be coached. We need, yeah. we, we are just needy. But who does that depend mm. on? Is it and you, the directors, that are making those calls? Well, or is we, it somebody we else? We interpret a story, and a story mm. usually mm. is written by a male writer mm -hmm. and if it's written by a female writer she's just trying to get her script out there so she will elevate men mm -hmm. in order for it to be accepted but mm -hmm. as women as in Tabby comes in maybe I should start writing mm -hmm. maybe I should write from a woman's point of view because we mm -hmm. do need mm -hmm. our point of view it's mm -hmm. essential it's it's important mm -hmm. it's integral to us changing mm -hmm. what the world looks at in terms of what women should be in mm -hmm. the industry mm -hmm. I mean we're sitting mm -hmm. somewhere and there's a whole lot of us. There's a lot of us who have stories to tell. But we're so afraid of alienating women in mm. terms of TV. Because that's the thing. It's all about being redeemed as a woman on screen. Mm. And mm. Um, you don't want to alienate your change. viewers. Yeah. Yes, we've got to change that view. We've got to change that mm. narrative. So yeah. we have to take a short break. We are back right after this.
across the globe, locally, and on the entire continent. Every second, every minute, and every hour. There's always a breaking story. We commit to giving you the most important, significant, and interesting news. That's why it is not a surprise that more Africans are tuning to SABC News to find out what is happening. Because when news break, we've got you covered. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Media Monitor, the title says it all. Can we really afford more job losses at such a critical time in our economy? Join our panel of experts as they unpack and monitor all the leading and breaking news stories making waves in the print and social media platforms. It seems we don't have a famous son-in-law any longer. Levi, what do you say to this? <laughs> An well, A-lister. I'll, I'll, I'll leave this one to Levi. <laughs> He's the romantic. <laughs> Watch Media Monitor with me, Alicia Jali, Sundays at 9 a.m. only on the SABC News Channel. asking the question what can be done to try and get more women behind the scenes making films and making TV series that are going to make it on the international stage and we are in conversation with the NFEF and also with a director from Isidine we're talking about this very issue and if you would like to take part in our conversation you know how to find us on social media so please hit us up so one of the things that we were talking about earlier is uh, driving that storyline mm. and making sure that you mm. get the women's stories told. Yeah. But how do we get past what we think the audience wants? So if you look at particularly the international audience, Emma, mm. you will mm. hear that you know they want to see the gangster stories. Yeah. They mm -hmm. want to see, and uh, we're so tired of those because yeah. there is more to South Africa's story mm -hmm. than that. Mm. But how do you convince the audiences mm -hmm. that there's more, there's more color in our story. <laughs> mm. um, you know, we, we, we spoke earlier about the role that um, agencies like ourselves play. Um, you know, we are really have a responsibility to play at a policy level. We have a responsibility to, to play at a research level, which mm. is exactly what we did. I mean, recently we released an audience research study mm. because we said we can't have individual conversations about what the audience wants or does not want because it's not just what Zama thinks the audience wants, it's not what Tabi thinks the audience wants, mm. but what does the audience actually want? So we commissioned a study you know, mm. th um, around what the audience wants, and the results were actually... Uh, it's surprising in most instances because those very things that we thought, no, this is what the audience wants, it actually was not. We found, for instance, that 53% of cinema goers are women mm. and they are black women and they are black employed women. So mm. that already t tells you that 53% of your audience is already the audience that will be receptive to mm. women's mm. stories. In fact, one of the things that uh, I thought was interesting in that research that you did yeah. was that you found that people in South Africa mm. are interested in content. So mm. they're not really yeah. saying South mm -mm. African content mm. versus international content. They no. just want good stories. They want yes. an engaging story, a story mm. that resonates with who they are, a story that can take them on that emotional journey and, mm. and they can connect with the people on screen. So how do you use that research then to build on it and make sure that more films are being made by mm. women to tell those kinds of stories? Well, first what we've done because once again, I said the <coughs> solutions are not just going to come from entities like ourselves, but the solutions are right there. We provide the tools so that the industry can come up mm. with the solutions as well. So what we have done is we've gone on road shows, we've been to Cape Town, Devon, and we've been you know, here mm. in Johannesburg where we've engaged with industry and presented mm. the results of the study and said, here's the study, we've made it available on our website and so on, because we want to say, here is information, equip yourself so that as you create, as you come up with decisions about what to do, you can do so in line with 
and knowing exactly what the industry wants. So in that way, we're hoping the industry themselves are going to utilize um, that in order to, to make proper decisions, in mm. the same way that we also as an enti entity are being challenged to do so. Mm. So I'm sorry, saying, let, yes. me, let, me, let me put you on the spot here and say, now that you've heard <laughs> yeah. what uh, has come out of the, the audience survey, yeah. what will you be doing what will you be taking back to your set on Isidin or to say, these are the changes we need to make to reflect more of our stories? Well, firstly, it has to go beyond Isidin. It has to... I like that. Virtual yeah. high five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost leaned over. <laughs> it has to go beyond um, Isidin. It has to... What you were talking about earlier, now we have the information that I thought we yeah. was not accessible to us, but uh, we've got the information. I've got to get my fellow director friends, my fellow writer friends, actors as well, female actresses, and start actually actively doing the work. There's no other way. We can talk about it to death, but mm -hmm. it's not going to change mm -hmm. unless we start mm -hmm. actually doing the work, making inroads where we thought we couldn't before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what needs to happen. So from today, from this moment on, past the credits and everything else, I will then start to think differently as to what my role is. And it's very important because we're at a, it's almost, we're at a precipice where things are changing. Yeah. Mm. And mm. we've got um, the, the resources. Now mm. I know we've got mm. the resources at our disposal. We've got the exposure. So at this point, I don't think we've got an excuse. We've got the talents. We've got the ability. Um, it's just a matter of maximizing the resources that are available to us. And I will definitely, definitely trust me. Give me a year, you'll see a film. <laughs> Wonderful. And when it does, please yeah. credit Interface. Yeah. Let of them course. know it was born You're here. going to have a cameo role. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when we're looking at growth uh, yes. in, in yeah. the low budget uh, mm -hmm. films that yes. we've seen, mm -hmm. I mean, people yes. are loving them. The Nollywood mm. style films uh, that are yeah. coming up. Mm. Are women taking advantage of that space? Well, I think, mm. I think they are, mm. because the, the biggest challenge I think uh, facing uh, women in the industry has been one of access, mm. and that is access to opportunities. Mm. Mm. Um, because all along you've been in a situation where we're told that, no, it's big budget, it's too mm. risky, we can't give it to someone that has not done something like this before. And that, you know, uh, principle in itself becomes a gatekeeper, you know, for someone that wants to still try out mm. and, and get experience. But now, you know, the opportunities are open. We have mm. budgets that are not too high so that you find that you are able to empower a lot more people to have a hand and try out. Have you stabilized now? And will you be able to take the challenge mm. on of making sure that women mm. are promoted? We've always been stable. We did mm -hmm. Even with those resignations? Mm. Yes, even with year. one mm. or two people leaving the organization, we've always been stable. And mm. I think we've continued to deliver and serve the film and television mm. industry. Right. And we will continue mm. to do that. Okay, and maybe you can make the connections that you need to make to make sure and that uh, we take this forward. Absolutely. Thank you very much, ladies, Thank for you. coming through to talk Thank to you. us. Thanks. And that's how we come to the end of our program. Thanks to you for tuning in. Do join us again next week at the same time. Good night.